okay, he's guilty. Okay, he's guilty. Does he really need to be removed? Does he really need to be removed? We have an election coming up. Does he really need to be removed? He's guilty. You know, is there really any doubt about this? I mean, do we really have any doubt about the facts here? Does anybody really question whether the president is capable of what he's charged with? No one is really making the argument, Donald Trump would never do such a thing. Because of course we know that he would, and of course we know that he did. It's a somewhat different question, though, to ask, OK, it's pretty obvious whether we can say it publicly or we can't say it publicly. We all know what we're dealing here with this president. But does he really need to be removed? And this is why he needs to be removed. Donald Trump chose Rudy Giuliani over his own intelligence agencies. He chose Rudy Giuliani over his own FBI director. He chose Rudy Giuliani over his own national security advisors. When all of them were telling him this Ukraine 2016 stuff is kooky, crazy Russian propaganda, he chose not to believe them. He chose to believe Rudy Giuliani. That makes him dangerous to us, to our country. That was Donald Trump's choice. Now, why would Donald Trump believe a man like Rudy Giuliani over a man like Christopher Wray? OK? Why would anyone in their right mind believe Rudy Giuliani over Christopher Wray? Because he wanted to, and because what Rudy was offering him was something that would help him personally. And what Christopher Ray was offering him was merely the truth. What Christopher Ray was offering him was merely the information he needed to protect his country and its elections. But that's not good enough. What's in it for him? What's in it for Donald Trump? This is why he needs to be removed. Now, you may be asking, how much damage can he really do in the next several months until the election? A lot. A lot of damage. Now, we just saw last week a report that Russia tried to hack, or maybe did hack, Burisma. OK? I don't know if they got in. I'm trying to find out. My colleagues on the Intel Committee, House and Senate, we're trying to find out, did the Russians get in? What are the Russian plans and intentions? Well, let's say they got in. And let's say they start dumping documents to interfere in the next election. Let's say they start dumping some real things they hacked from Burisma. Let's say they start dumping some fake things they didn't hack from Burisma, but they want you to believe they did. Let's say they start blatantly interfering in our election again to help Donald Trump. Can you have the least bit of confidence that Donald Trump will stand up to them and protect our national interest over his own personal interest? You know you can't, which makes him dangerous to this country. You know you can't. You know you can't count on him. None of us can. None of us can. What happens if China got the message? Now, you can say, well, he's just joking. Of course, he didn't really mean China should investigate the Bidens. You know that's no joke. Now, maybe you could have argued three years ago when he said, hey, Russia, if you're listening, hack Hillary's emails. Maybe you could give him a freebie and say he was joking. But now we know better. Hours after he did that, Russia did, in fact, try to hack Hillary's emails. There's no mulligan here when it comes to our national security. So what if China does overtly or covertly start to help the Trump campaign? You think he's going to call him out on it? Or you think he's going to give him a better trade deal on it? Can any of us really have the confidence that Donald Trump will put his personal interests ahead of the national interest? Is there really any evidence 
in this presidency that should give us the ironclad confidence that he would do so. You know you can't count on him to do that. That's the sad truth. You know you can't count on him to do that. The American people deserve a president they can count on to put their interest first. To put their interest first. Colonel Vindman said, here right matters. Here right matters. Well, let me tell you something. If right doesn't matter, if right doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how good the Constitution is. It doesn't matter how brilliant the framers were. It doesn't matter how good or bad our advocacy in this trial is. It doesn't matter how well written the oath of impartiality is. If right doesn't matter, we're lost. If the truth doesn't matter, we're lost. Framers couldn't protect us from ourselves if right and truth don't matter. And you know that what he did was not right. You know, that's what they do in the old country that Colonel Vindman's father came from, or the old country that my great-grandfather came from, or the old countries that your ancestors came from, or maybe you came from. But here, right is supposed to matter. It's what's made us the greatest nation on earth. No constitution can protect us. Right doesn't matter anymore. And you know you can't trust this president to do what's right for this country. You can trust he will do what's right for Donald Trump. He'll do it now. He's done it before. He'll do it for the next several months. He'll do it in the election if he's allowed to. This is why if you find him guilty, you must find that he should be removed. Because right matters. Because right matters. And the truth matters. Otherwise, we are lost. Mr. Chief Justice. The majority Justice. leader is recognized. I ask unanimous consent that the trial adjourn until 1 p.m. Friday, January the 24th, and that this order also constitute the adjournment of the Senate. Without objection, so ordered. The Senate is adjourned. Is that right? <clears throat> This is our breaking news uh, tonight. We've been watching the House managers wrapping up uh, day two of their arguments. A very emotional closing there from the lead impeachment manager, uh, Adam Schiff, saying, right matters, truth matters, otherwise we are lost. Getting um, choked up there, he's saying that uh, you, we can't not count on President Trump to put the American people's interests first. Uh, that he will do what's right for Donald Trump and not for the American people. It is a day when they laid out the abuse of power case in the impeachment trial of this president, President Trump. This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon. Thank you so much for joining us uh, and staying up late and uh, going through this very long day here. It's been going all afternoon and all night. A lot of the strongest moments coming from Democrats playing back sound bites from the uh, the close, uh, close Donald Trump allies like Lindsey Graham and Rudy Giuliani and sworn testimony from diplomats Bill Taylor and Gordon Sondland and David Holmes. House managers return tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. You heard um, uh, the Senate Majority Leader saying that, um, as well as uh, uh, Justice Roberts as well. Uh, Team Trump currently set to begin their arguments Saturday, seeing and learning that uh, right now they expect to use two days and not three Sometime next week comes the next phase, 16 hours for senators to ask questions through the Chief Justice John Roberts. And only after that, the vote on the big question and all this, whether to call witnesses. So let's bring in now John Dean. Laura Coates is here as well. Frank Bruni, Catherine Rampell joins us. Wow. Uh, John, 
it's uh, amazing. It has been a, amazing, I have to be honest, to watch Adam Schiff uh, through all of this. The House impeachment managers, all of them doing very well to present their case. But to watch Adam Schiff uh, become emotional and to present his arguments, it has really been a thing to watch, I think. He's very strong. He, they did a, he laid out and started the day with a broad brush of where they were going. And then they went piece by piece, a deep dive into each phase of the abuse of power. And it was very convincing. It's overwhelming evidence. Uh, it's awfully hard for anybody who listens and follows this to just brush it off.